future of mankind hinges on this operation. Defense Force 4.1 has arrived on the PlayStation 4 and thus, so has the definitive Earth Defense Force experience. The best frame rate this series has ever seen, improved draw distance, lightning fast load times, retooled campaign, the biggest, craziest battles in the series ever, a reinvigorated online community, at least at the time, has turned an already worthy entry into this cult series into a must have. Video over. It's a must buy it. It's just it's fucking great. Just buy it. Done. Good night. Okay, yes, yes, there is more to talk about, but for real, if you like Earth Defense Force, there is no reason to be sleeping on this game. Buy a PS4 if you have to. Until Dawn and Bloodborne are incredible too, so that's three great PS4 exclusives right there. But here's the problem with Earth Defense Force 4.1 The Shadow of New Despair. It is an incredible refinement of the Earth Defense Force formula, but it is not an evolution. EDF has never had this much content and played this well, but it's still an EDF game through and through, which is good news for fans, but it's tough to say if this is going to convert the non-believers, which is fine for now, but I worry about the series' future if there's going to be more EDF games down the line. Now, if you're new to the Earth Defense Force series, well, the footage speaks for itself. EDF is big guns, big bugs, giant robots, insane firefights, and some of the most satisfying combat in any video game. It is a series that gleefully trades surface level graphics for scope and spectacle. In fact, thanks to the power of the PS4, the insanity rendered is sometimes beyond words, and it achieves this by keeping it simple. Though the game manages an incredible amount of variety through dozens and dozens of levels, weapons, enemies, vehicles, your objective is always the same, kill everything. EDF doesn't let things like ammunition get in the way of the fun, nearly all guns have unlimited ammo, though Watch out for those reload times. It doesn't penalize you for leveling giant buildings because destroying skyscrapers is what rocket launchers are for. Though the instruction book features a impressively lengthy prologue, the game itself doesn't have much in the way of story, but it features some truly sublime cornball voice acting. Few games strive for and successfully deliver such an incredible level of power fantasy ridiculousness. It is a rare and wonderful achievement. But as you can also plainly see from the footage, it is a series of games with issues. But before we break all that down, how about a brief explanation for why the game is called 4.1? Known in its native land as Chikyu Boigun, Earth Defense Force is a series of games from Japanese developer Sandlot and currently published by Marvelous subsidiary Xseed Games. They have no connection with Super Earth Defense Force for the Super Nintendo, or the bad guys in Red Faction Guerrilla. EDF 4.1 is essentially an HD remaster of 2014's Earth Defense Force 2025, or Chikyu Boigun 4, hence 4.1. I'm not sure why we suddenly started using the Japanese naming convention, but either way, 4.1 matters because it puts the series back on track. Though Earth Defense Force 2025 was a much needed upgrade for the series, featuring four classes, each with their own weapons, a longer campaign, new monsters, mechs and ships, online play, and auto-saving, it was plagued with some serious problems that even a hardcore fan like myself had trouble ignoring. Never a series known as a technical showcase, 2025 featured some truly rotten slowdown, terrible pop-in, and unnecessarily long load times. It's enough to recommend 2007's EDF 2017 over 2025. The technical issues are really that bad. EDF 4.1 fixes nearly all of 2025's problems and tweaks things further, almost rendering the original obsolete. An impressive feat the likes I haven't seen since the silky smooth ports of Perfect Dark and Guardian Heroes on XBLA. In a world lousy with unnecessary ports and HD remasters, EDF 4.1 sits with those ports that are worth their salt. The EDF series has never been very popular, and that's no accident, but regardless, I absolutely recommend this game to anyone who's ever been on the fence about it. If you like action games and the type of wanton destruction in Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto, I think you'll really, really like this game. But 
There are larger issues here, and it's a deeper discussion than I can do on my own. I'll have to call upon an old friend for help. Eric! Eric, are you there? Oh, hello! God damn it, Eric, we almost got through the whole video without bug jokes. Sorry! But what's up, dude? I'm busy playing EDF 4.1. Oh, perfect, because I had you back on for the Insect Armageddon review, and I had to have you back for the 4.1 review because you're still the only EDF super fan that I know. So real quick, man, like 4.1, thumbs up, thumbs down, what do you think? Like Derek said, EDF 4.1 is by far the best game in the series. It's a really great game. Wait a minute, that was, that was earlier in the video. How did you hear that? Well, you could say I was being a fly on the wall. Oh. Okay. But as I was saying, it's a great game and it's just as edf -y as ever, but there's definitely a few things that bug me. Ah, bug. Gotcha. Jokes. Gotcha. What? No, Derek, focus. <laughs> Sorry. But I totally agree, man. I think the world is a better place now that we have 4.1. I'll seriously be playing this game for like the next two years. But now that we have this game, it is time for the series to move on and make some big changes for future games. While other video game franchises like Far Cry are concerned with taking graphics to new levels, EDF uses PS4 technology to churn out essentially the same graphics, but just more of it on the screen at once. While it won't appeal to everyone, I personally admire their screw it attitude and gravitation toward the absurd, and I think that's what's earned them their cult following. Right, and maybe that's the problem here. I don't know about you, I really, really like this game, but I've played it before. At a certain point, I'm not sure where the line that separates bold individualism and blind tradition is. Like, let's get real here. 4.1 is a great moment for this series. It is a sublime refinement of the EDF formula, but it's gotta be time for an evolution, right? Well, I don't know. Both 2025 and 4.1 certainly made improvements, but they've largely stuck to and in fact deepened their classic EDF roots in a lot of ways. They feel like sequels to 2017 to me, like they had unfinished business or something. If we get another EDF game, there are definitely some modern gaming trends that EDF would be wise to adopt, like automatically acquiring loot drops, the active reload system that was somewhat adequately implemented in EDF Insect Armageddon, and AI that actually puts the eye in AI. Artificial insects? Not artificial insects, artificial intelligence. Oh, okay. Even as a hardcore fan of this series, I find my patience running thin when I'm forced to roll around a massive level to pick up a piece of armor, wait impatiently for my gun to reload, or when I blow myself to smithereens because one of my crew decides to run right in front of my rocket. Absolutely agree, man. Again, I don't know about you, but I played the Wing Diver almost exclusively because it's so much easier to pick up items with. There are some things about EDF that truly make EDF EDF, but some stuff has gotta go. Yeah, I think somewhere between 4.1 and IA is the next logical step for EDF. IA had its problems, and I think, Derek, you were rougher on that game than I was, but it was a glimpse at what a modern EDF would look like. Active reloads, experience points, currency to buy items instead of just finding them. That's stuff from AI, but with the scale and insanity of 4.1. Basically, 4.1 scale with IA's combat stuff. Yes, they need to embrace the MMO traits they've been dancing around for almost a decade now. They could maybe leave in the weapon drops or split weapons between loot drops and store purchases, but the armor drops, that's gotta go. That's my big thing, really. Stuff like the cornball dialogue in the absence of a real story, that's fine. I'll, I'll even take the recycled giant bugs, robots, and levels. Really, I think my biggest beef is the character progression and the grinding is just hopelessly outdated and isn't at all charming like a lot of EDF's other qualities. And I know this sounds like I'm just telling them to rip off Destiny or Borderlands. I mean, that's almost exactly what I'm telling them to do. But I'm confident that they can implement these changes and still find a way to keep it weird and distinctly EDF. For sure. And another thing I liked about IA is that the enemies disappeared when you killed them instead of turning over on their backs, blocking items or your path, and then just blinking out of existence. At least in 2025 and 4.1, enemies sometimes break apart into pieces, so shooting them is more satisfying, but their dead corpses are still annoying obstacles that get in the way. Yeah, this game uses the Havoc physics engine. You know what else uses the Havoc physics engine? Goddamn Dark Souls. Where is the ragdoll? Why can't I just move the corpses around with my feet? I know the tech is there, but listen, here's some food for thought. Sandlot is Japanese, and ain't no one making console games in Japan anymore. I'm sure you've heard about Konami shifting to pachinko and mobile games, but that isn't an isolated incident. If they are working on another EDF game, which looking at their rap sheet seems very likely because they don't really make much else, 
This is not the time to be upsetting the apple cart. I just don't see them taking these chances, or their publishers letting them take these chances, with EDF5. They're probably worried about alienating their fans, which is a problem when you're such a niche game. Yeah, and the way they treat IA, all the passive-aggressive mean comments about, oh man, it's been eight years, like, damn, we get it, IA never happened, jeez, really feels like they look at IA as a complete failure and will be unwilling and unable to see the few innovations. Which, I don't know, doesn't seem like a good future for the series. Nah, it, it doesn't really. But like I said, man, whatever happens, we got the definitive EDF game here with 4.1. And there's definitely enough to hold me. Completely clearing this game feels like impossible to do in one lifetime. But the 100% clear platinum trophy is currently sitting at 0.1%. So apparently it is possible. Man, and then there's the ports of EDF 2 and 3 for the Vita, which I haven't played at all. When it comes to the Vita games, I've played both EDF 2017 Portable and EDF 2 Invaders from Planet Space, probably the best subtitle a game has ever had, and they're both very good. 2017 Portable is basically the same as 2017 on the 360 for the most part, save the fact that you can cooperatively play online and play as the Pale Wing. It really changes the game and makes it a lot more fun. EDF2 is a remake of the second game in the EDF series, which hasn't been released in North America until now. It really feels like an older game, and it's not nearly as polished as 4.1 of course, but I can't argue with playing a new-to-me EDF game with the option to play as Pale Wing. It instantly makes the game heaps of fun. They're both great EDF games for mobile gaming, but EDF 4.1 is where it's at. I had a chance to sit down with the second DLC pack for 4.1, and it's some really good stuff. You get the sense that the team really figured out the subtle art of solid EDF level design, but they're intended for high-level characters or online with a crew because they are super hard. Going in my typical solo wing diver style, I've had to bump the difficulty down to easy, but it's been a great way to grind out armor tokens, so maybe I'll be ready for normal by the end. But I think we're starting to do that thing where we talk about Earth Defense Force forever, so let's wrap things up, dude. All right, I got bugs to stomp, so I'm gonna buzz off now. Gotta fly. This guy. If you want more Earth Defense Force videos, I go into a little more detail in my review of Earth Defense Force 2017. You can check out that video here on the left. Be sure to check out Eric's channel if you want more of that crazy dude. He's got this insane game show. And also, if you want to see the two of us discuss Insect Armageddon, got that video over here on the right. Stop Skeletons from Fighting is a Patreon-supported show, as always. Super special thanks to all our wonderful supporters. If you would like to support the show and see your name here, click the logo there and give what you can. Thanks again for watching and see you again real soon.